Yo, 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 what is up guys? Thank you for coming back to Let's Drive Media. You can tell uh, my voice is still a little bit fucked up, but it's getting better. It's almost all the way there now. I can finally at least like talk kind of like a normal person. But anyways, thank you for coming back to the channel. Please subscribe if you're new. Today is gonna be a little bit bit different of an episode. Uh, I'm actually on like a little vacation right now since I left Toyota you saw in the last video. I got a week off till I go to BMW. So this week I'm actually gonna be in Montana. So by the time you guys are seeing this video, I'll probably be drinking a beer in Montana. <laughs> so anyways, today's episode is gonna be a little different. Like I said, uh, I figured since I got the toolbox here at home right now, I can kind of give you guys like a walkthrough, a little toolbox breakdown of what I got in the drawers. Um, at BMW, they supply your own toolbox, so I'm not going to need to bring this box with me. I am, however, just going to need to bring my tools, so I'll be uh, bringing those. But for right now, I just got everything here, so let's get started. I can show you guys exactly what you're going to need to get in the field. might kind of be focused towards Toyota because again I was a Toyota tech so I'm gonna basically show you guys the tools I was using and the setup I basically had or while I was working there uh, you don't need necessarily all I have like a lot of snap on Mac but I also have a lot of Harbor Freight so don't be thinking like oh I gotta buy snap on like I'm getting that student discount right now at Citrus I better buy a bunch of shit I don't even know if I'm gonna need it no don't do that cuz a lot of the times the Harbor Freight stuff is just as good as a Snap-on or a Mac. There's only like some things I'd recommend to actually get like Snap-on like that. And even the box, you don't necessarily need a big Snap-on box like this, but that's just what I wanted and that's what I decided to do. So first off, uh, this is a 73 inch Snap-on, <clears throat> which I got on sale for about 5,000 bucks which is pretty cheap for a box this size. And then I went ahead and bought the steel top that came with the plugs, which was another thousand bucks, but I bought that before I knew I wasn't gonna need a box at my new spot, so now I just have a fancy ass uh, vinyl cutter table. That's what I've been using it for right now. So um, this box is pretty big. I probably have like 50% of it filled up with actual tools. The rest of the drawers just have like shit in it and stuff that's not really important. This is my old box. This is what I was using on the lube rack, which is still kind of like bigger than you need. This one is a 53 inch by 20 deep. But honestly, this box is big enough to be on the line at like pretty much anywhere you go. Like you don't need that big of a box. This one is a 73 inch by 24. So it's a lot bigger. Yeah, it's more than I need, but it looks fucking badass and I already bought it, so I guess I'll just keep it. But let's get started and what's in the top drawer. So in the top drawer, this is kind of my go-to drawer. I kind of want to have like the shit you use the most on the top. Now it's easy to get to. But starting from the left side, um, half inch sockets, uh, 10 through 24, you're gonna need. It kind of sucks because like usually, well half inch sockets, they'll sell like eight through 24. Three eight sockets, they usually sell from eight through 19. But regardless, as far as working on Toyotas, Hondas, Nissans, anything import, all you're really gonna need is the eight, 10, 12, 14, 17, 19, 21, and a 24. But it usually just makes sense to buy the whole set. Also, it comes in handy to get the swivel sockets when you're doing transmissions and stuff, so you don't need those, but those are nice to have. These are all American sockets, uh, or US spec, and I don't really use those too often. Uh, down here, we just kind of have some miscellaneous shit, like some random 12 points, crow's foot, uh, U-joint socket, and spark plug sockets, and some Allen key sockets. And then here are just, um, 3 8 swivel sockets, but these are all the odd numbers. 
that you don't really use on import vehicles so I kind of just leave those in there uh, ratchets two three-eighths ratchets you're gonna need like pretty much every day quarter inch ratchet you'll use every now and then and then just a nice little uh, six inch extension you really don't need that much bigger of an extension unless you're doing like a transmission which in that case we use this big boy right here this is a nice half inch to three inch adapted uh, extension basically only use that for transmissions and then over here we just have another tray that has a uh, 8 through 19 I got the shorts the mediums and then the, the deeps and then right here we have some e-torque sockets these come in handy every time like now and then just basically to like remove studs on Toyota vehicles and then the quarter inch swivel these come in handy whenever you're doing like a timing cover or anything like that on the side of a front wheel drive engine so those are pretty nice to have uh, really I recommend getting like a little tray like this that'll hold like 10 or 12 sockets because anytime I do a job I basically whip this out with my ratchet and my 3 8 gun and I put on here 8, 10, 12 or 10, 12, 14, 17, 19 same with the swivels those are basically the only sockets you need and you can pretty much take apart like an entire Toyota with just those so then over here we have some Harbor Freight wrenches 21, 22, 24, 26 these are pretty nice when you're doing alignments and that's basically like the only time you use it on like a tie rod or something there's really not any other times you're going to use these big sockets that way I, that's the reason i just got a harbor freights and then we got some gear wrenches 8 through 19 those come in handy every now and then and then just our standard uh open and closed end wrenches 8 through 19 of course because that's all you're going to need and power tools, I like to use this uh, DeWalt 12 volt. It's a nice screwdriver for when you're doing like dashboards and stuff or taking off a skid plate, that one works out good. I also have this Milwaukee quarter inch impact, which I don't use too much. Um, I'll do it every now and then. And then this one right here is the one everyone's gotta have, a 3 8 cordless impact gun. This one is a fucking beast, this Milwaukee. Um, I believe it's the newest one out there right now, but <clears throat> this shit's strong enough to take off lug nuts, so it's pretty fucking strong. Use this like every single day for sure. Probably one of my favorite tools right here. And then, of course, half inch ratchet. You're gonna need that definitely. And if you're on the loop rack, these uh, 14 slash 12 gear wrenches, pretty beast for the drain plugs. And lighting, of course, is very important. Pretty much everyone's gonna have a stream light. These are hella bright and rechargeable. And then I recommend getting another one, like a magnetic magnetic wand, because these are nice. You can just like stick on somewhere when you're underneath the car or something and give you some light and some extra batteries. So that's basically it for the top drawer. Like I said, the top drawer is like the one I go to the most because it has all the sockets and the ratchets and the power tools that I use, or at least uh, electric power tools. So that's basically it for drawer number one. Oh, and also an underhood light is really nice to have. Strap it on the hood. This one's battery powered up there. That's the one I started with. It's a plug-in. It's a Sabre plug-in. That one's pretty good, but it gets annoying having to run the cable everywhere, so I recommend the plug-in one. I have this Milwaukee one. Yeah, it's nice with Milwaukee. Oh, shit. I recommend Milwaukee Milwaukee because all their batteries are universal, so you can use those same batteries on the light and my power tools, and they also make like a million other power tools that you can use the same batteries for. So, that's it. Oh, and a torque wrench. This is the one tool I wouldn't cheap out on. At least get like some kind of name brand besides Harbor Freight, especially if you're gonna be doing like engine work. Because even though they all do the same thing, you wanna have a torque wrench that's really gonna set the torque, the torque on a bolt to the spec you want it. Cause you don't wanna be stripping bolts thinking you're putting it at like 13 foot pounds when really like that torque wrench is setting it at like 15. So you can hear the Harbor Freight one if you want, but I just recommend getting like 
a fancy one. It doesn't have to be digital like this one. Uh, I know you can get some at like Home Depot and stuff, like the Cobalt Craftsman. Those, I guess, are pretty good, but I recommend a Snap-on Mac or one of the high-end brands, at least just for the torque wrench. All right, <clears throat> fucking boys, pretty fucked still, but drawer number two. Drawer number two, I usually keep all my pliers and screwdriver, shit like that. Over here, we just have the Phillips and flatheads, small, medium, large. And then two extended ones, those come in pretty handy. These are also Harbor Freight, by the way. And then pry bars, you're gonna want like a decent size, like one footer. And then this one's like a three foot. Uh, I recommend at least like one big pry bar. A lot of times you're gonna like need a lot of force when doing stuff, like pulling out a CV axle or like trying to pull like a lower control arm down or something like that. You're gonna want a big pry bar. So those ones I believe are Mac. Cause I bought them in a set that came with a couple and then a little stubby one and also this is like a kind of little panel popper this comes in handy anytime you're doing like interior work or like removing any kind of weird clips you just shove it in and pop it out that one's pretty nice right here we got another clip puller this one's nice on the Toyota skid plates a lot of them have some like weird clips where you need to grab in here pull it down to pull it out you can just use two screwdrivers, but I found this one saves you a lot of time, and time is money, so I recommend that one. Uh, crescent wrenches, I actually use those a lot for when doing alignments, just because not all the tie rod lock nuts are the same size, so you can just put one of these on, crack it loose, use the other one to adjust the inner tie rod, and call it a day. Vice grips, of course, uh, sometimes you'll have like a hood prop, the hydraulic ones that aren't working. So these are nice to just hold the hood up. And then just an assortment of pliers for when you're dealing with like hoses and hose clamps and stuff like that. These will come in handy. Um, over here, we have hose cutoff pliers. These are nice if you're taking off like a coolant hose on a hybrid or something and you don't want all the coolant to come out of the hybrid cooling system. But then you're gonna have to bleed it again or even on a regular cooling system like on the throttle body or something like that. You just pinch off the hose and that way it'll keep them shut tight. Uh, this, the gravy tool when you're doing brakes, spreads the calipers. I know a lot of guys will just use like big channel locks like these, but I find this one a lot more helpful, especially if they're like four piston calipers. Really helpful to um, spread them back so you can put the new brake pads in. Snap ring pliers, these are just some Harbor Freight ones because I hardly use them. Only time I think I use those is to remove the little snap ring end link on a CV joint when I'm doing a rebuild. Um, pocket screwdrivers, rarely use those. This tool right here is super badass. It's a radiator hose clamp plier. It grabs right onto the clamp and you squeeze it shut. And it'll lock in place. So those are good when it's like those hard to get to hoses. Because a lot of the times you'll be going to remove like a hose clamp and like it's in a stupid angle and you can't really fit your pliers in there So that tool comes in handy a lot uh, Another favorite is the chain whip uh, This is basically the only time I use this is to hold like a pulley like say a water pump pulley or crank crank pulley To hold it so you can break the nuts loose or tighten them also uh, these two um, CV axle tools or a must have if you're gonna be rebuilding CV axles at Toyota. These are actually um, the pliers used to uh, secure the clamps. There's two types on Toyotas, and these are the ones you'll need. So, I highly recommend these unless you want to be borrowing tools. And that's basically all for drawer two. That is also another commonly used drawer, so I'm usually hopping between this drawer and this drawer when I'm going for tools on the job. Alright. Next drawer, this one's kind of more of a miscellaneous drawer, I would say. Uh, we just have some Harbor Freight punches, used every now and then. Uh, picks, really helpful to grab things when you can't really stick your hand in there. And punches. And then I just have some random drill bits and Allen wrenches and stuff like that. So that's basically it for this drawer. This tool is very helpful. It's uh, to unseat the stake and the nut on a CV bolt or a CV axle nut. 
Uh, that one comes in really handy. A lot of people just shove a screwdriver or something in there or a pick or a punch like this. But uh, this one's really nice because it's kind of uh, shaped to go in there and uh, bend the stake part out. So that one comes in really handy, guys. And we'll go over here. This one is my gun drawer, my air tool drawer. Uh, tools you're gonna rec I would recommend for sure would be a half inch uh, impact gun. This one I just got snap on. I've had this one for about four or five years now and it hasn't failed me once. Uh, clearly a tool you don't want to cheap out on because you're gonna be using it every day. Uh, I have an Ingersoll Rand 3 8 air gun. This one I did use for a while until I got this damn Milwaukee. Those Milwaukee is seriously stronger than that air power tool. So why am I gonna plug it into air when I could just have the cordless one right there? Uh, 3-8 air ratchet. These come in really handy as well as this quarter inch air ratchet. This one has a soft flexi hose, so it's really nice when you're like under a dash or something like that. And you don't have a lot of room to have like the big hunkin' air hose sticking in there, getting the rest of the car dirty. So I really recommend that one. I believe Cornwell makes the same thing. This is a blue point, but really like those ones. Air ratchets are really good anytime you're doing like work on the side of a car or underneath the car when you really don't have enough room and you don't want to be sitting in there ratcheting the air ratchets. Uh, pretty handy. And then we have just this wire wheel. This is good for like cleaning up oil pans and stuff like that, cleaning off old gasket material. And also you can put the cutoff wheel when you wanna get uh when you wanna get crazy. And that's basically it for that drawer. Close you, close you. Next drawer. Uh kind of some miscellaneous air tools like uh, drill. Only time I really ever use this is if I'm like patching a tire. Air saw, uh, really never use this. I used to use it when I was at GM a lot. Cause we had to cut the holes in the truck bed liner to install the uh, the bed the truck hooks inside the bed. <clears throat> so that's really all for that drawer. These little clips are nice for uh, when you're doing brake jobs, you can hang the caliper up and not have to have it hanging on the brake hose. That's not a good idea. And these are like two bucks at Harbor Freight. So oil filter wrench, obviously, and as well as these two oil filter wrenches. Let me show you the part number, because this one's really good. OF Toy 468. Um, I've never had an oil filter that wouldn't come loose from this one. Sometimes you'll use this one or some other kind of uh, oil filter wrench for the cartridge types, and it'll just spin around the oil filter. So I really recommend this one, never fails. And this one, of course, for just the regular screw-on filters and stuff like that. So, done with that drawer. Next drawer. These ones are Torx, uh, Allens, and more Torx. Uh, honestly, I hardly use any of these the Allens. These Allens, they're uh, US, so, or SAE, which I never really use. And the Torx bits, I'll use them every now and then, but like I said, on Toyotas, you rarely have to deal with Torx. So maybe if you are gonna buy some, like a T25 and a T27, and maybe a T30, but besides that, there's really never a reason for Torx. But I will be needing those at BMW, so it's good to have those. Next drawer, nothing. <clears throat> Next drawer kind of the carpenter's drawer. You got uh, hammers, mallets. Uh, these are all Harbor Freight shit. Like I said, uh, you don't need to buy like some snap-on mallet. You're really just gonna be fucking hitting shit with it. So don't go waste your money. Air hammer, this thing is super badass. Uh, I use it all the time. Anytime you're trying to break something loose or split something open, this thing's really, uh, really helpful. Especially with this pointy bit for like CV axles and stuff like that. Push it right out of the hub. Highly recommend a good air hammer, a powerful one too. And these uh, Harbor Freight ratchet straps, these come in really handy. Especially like when you're trying to pull the, uh, what's say, the knuckle away from something. 
to give you uh, more room in there. So you're dropping a transmission, pulling out axles or something like that. Those are really helpful. And just anytime you need something uh, to hold something out of your way. So highly recommend those. Next drawer. I believe that's most of my shit. Now right here is kind of just some electrical shit. Uh, generic OBD2 scanner. This one's nice for like when you just want to pull a code really quick and you don't want to get the laptop out. Really good. Uh, test light, you're gonna need. Definitely to diagnose electrical problems, stuff like that. And then I just have some electrical repair tools like these wire strippers and connectors and stuff like that. That drawer is nothing really. That drawer is nothing really. Uh, nothing. Nothing. And this one would kind of be like more specialty tools. Um, 12 point axle nut sockets. You'll be using those. I bought this one on eBay for like 12 bucks. And it's done me fine. Impact screwdriver. This one I'll probably use every now and then, but not too important. I use more of this at home than at work. Coolant pressure tester. Uh, very important to have, very good diagnostic tool. Recommend one of those. Back there I have Harbor Freight torque wrench that I no longer use. And then some torque impact torque sockets, torque extensions, whatever the fuck. And then right here, uh, this is a thread restoring kit. This one comes in handy a lot if you put a bolt on wrong or something and you need to tap it out or re-thread it. I uh, highly recommend just getting at least like a basic set of this. It will help you out. And then right here, this one I just got is basically all the Allen's Torx, female Torx, e-Torx, shit like that that I plan to use at BMW. Another thing to recommend would be a service cart or a service tray. A lot of people use service carts, which are basically like this, but it's like a little mini toolbox with a flap, and then it'll have like a toolbox drawers or something like that. You've probably seen them at Harbor Freight, but I honestly like this service tray a lot better. It's got a drawer right here, so you can put some like miscellaneous stuff, bolts and nuts, I usually uh, organize bolts and nuts on these trays right here and then I'll use these to put parts and tools on and then on the side you can put like your pry bars and big screwdrivers and it even has like a little slot because you can hang stuff in here like your air tools they'll fit right in there and just dangle so this one's pretty nice because it's just like nice and compact and it's nothing too crazy I picked this one up off Mac for 150 bucks and no one else in the shop really had one of these, but I personally dig it a lot more than service carts. Like I said, I kind of have a mix of name brand stuff like Snap-on Mac, Cornwell, and a lot of Harbor Freight stuff. Because what I'm trying to say is you don't need to buy like the expensive shit for like shit you're not going to use that much or shit that's not really a moving piece. Um, I recommend just getting like the low end cheap stuff unless you want to ball out because you really don't need to spend the money on like expensive shit that maybe you're going to use like once in like fucking a couple months or something like that and then same with the box it's like a big ass box but as you guys can see i probably have like 50 percent of the drawers filled with actual tools the rest is kind of just like trash or like shit paperwork and stuff like that that you never you don't really need a drawer for kind of just like a storage drawer so honestly I th i'm pretty sure if i wanted to i could fit all my tools from this big ass toolbox in that little toolbox and that one might still even have room so i still got plenty of room to fill on this one and unfortunately i'm not even gonna need it at work but you never know if i end up going somewhere one day where i do need a toolbox so that's why i'm just gonna hold on to this one and then i'm actually selling that one to a friend of mine so yeah guys that's basically it uh it's kind of a random episode i know but i figured i had the toolbox here might as well give you guys some insight on the tools i'm using at work and um 
Hope you guys got some value out of this. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions or recommendations or anything like that. And that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys think. I love hearing from you guys. I'm going to have fun in Montana. Catch you guys next time. Peace!